Look at this. Hello, RJ. This is a <laughs> this is a extreme gene clown, like a blade clown. Ooh, you're a cheeky monkey. Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the vlog from Chicago. We had an absolutely incredible time last night with David Dobrik and the entire gang. And guess who I had sleeping in my bed last night? Look at this. Hello, RJ. What are you doing, buddy? He absolutely loves the pillow. <laughs> Regardless, we are going to gear up and we're going to start to head back home. But first, we're going to stop at a friend of mine's place called Chicago Reptile House to see what kind of awesome animals they have. What do you say? We have an amazing time together and push aside all our problems. In the next 12 or 15 minutes, let me know down in the comments how your day is going. And while you're down there, let's smash that like button. Let's try to get this video over 5,000 likes. I appreciate you guys so much. It's going to be an absolutely incredible day. Let's get things rolling. So I am at Chicago Reptile House and it's a pretty cool place because it's just really started as a reptile store But now there's saltwater fish and there's birds and uh, it's pretty cool But these are all really cool reptiles. I love specialty reptile shops You don't see a tremendous amount of them around at least my area So uh, whenever I get a chance to do this and this has been around for quite some time Of course Brian Potter the promoter for the Tinley Park or the NARBC shows is the one that owns this place I haven't been here in years so uh, it was really cool to see how they've kind of grown So let's just take a look around too Again, these are all reptile tanks here, which is pretty cool. Look at this little cute monkey here. Look at this guy. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna roll him on the Oh, a bunch of little hypo boas. Oh my gosh, they're so cool. Ball python tank. Oh god, that's awesome. And this is the fish part over here. This is all of the marine fish. Look at these. Oh, look at the little puffer here. How cute is that? Got some wrasse over here. Got all kinds of awesome clownfish. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. Take a look at all. Oh, wow. Whoa, look at that. That is so gorgeous. I absolutely love marine fish. I definitely have to set up a marine fish tank at some point. So these are all the birds here. So uh, there's all kinds of cool stuff. Oh my gosh, and Noah loves birds. So take a look at this one. Oh my God, he is so pretty. Oh, and the scarlet macaw. Look at how cool that is. Oh my gosh. Oh, hey bud. What's going on? <laughs> these guys are all so cool. Oh, look at this, look at this. Oh, look at you, hi. Hi, what are you doing, bud? Hello, you're puffing up, aren't you? What's going on? <laughs> it's cool. So let's go ahead and take a look at a couple reptiles. Yeah, and I absolutely love places like this because they just have such an eclectic collection of cool animals. This would happen to be a hypo boa. The first hypo boas actually came from a guy named Jeff G out in Arizona and uh, he produced them. He didn't even know that they were a genetic mutation. He just thought they were really light boa constrictors because he didn't have a really good handle on the genetics behind things. And then realistically over the next few years, actually realized that they were a co-dominant mutation. And uh, when you bred them to a normal, about half the the babies came out and what really it's all about is it's just lacking melanin but you can always see down at the very tip of the tail they're still black around the saddles after those first couple saddles all the black that borders the saddles basically goes away and it makes it just kind of a, a more just subtle look and stuff like that and again when you breed them together you can get supers as well so it's a uh, it's just an absolutely beautiful thing and these were kind of early mutations of boa constrictors so it's cool to see them here take a look at how pretty this bearded dragon is its name is Leonard and it's got this really beautiful red look to him you know the red stuff all really started at Sandfire Dragon Ranch out in California and uh, it's basically a polygenic trait which just basically means you're line breeding them to produce really beautiful animals and there's all kinds of line bred traits with bearded dragons now yellows and whites and and of course reds and basically what that means is you just breed like the reddest animals together and then the every generation that goes by they get more red and more beautiful so uh, Leonard here is pretty cool take a look at this cute little monkey here this is actually a frill dragon and of course these are the ones that can pull out out these frills and make them really big and there's really two varieties there's the Indonesians and then there's the Australians the Australians are the bigger variety of them uh, but they're actually really cool one of the things is they need a little bit higher humidity so a lot of people kind of make the mistake with the frillies of keeping them kind of like a desert lizard but the truth is is they need that humidity or they kind of do bad but uh, they're absolutely amazing again that defense mechanism they'll blow these big flaps up that's why they call them frill dragons and they make their heads look really big to kind of fend off other kind of predators and stuff like that but I've absolutely always loved frail dragons and believe it or not the first time I ever saw a frail dragon in the wild was in Darwin Australia and it was in a schoolyard believe it 
<laughs> we're literally in the middle of a schoolyard. There was a bunch of frilled dragons just running around. It was so cool. Take a look at these cute little things here. Of course, these are carpet pythons. And I've showed you albino carpet pythons at my place, which are really beautiful. But this is a little zebra carpet right here. This is actually a co-dominant mutation. So when you breed them together, you can actually get solid yellow carpet pythons. Uh, and of course, a lot of times the zebras are really dark black and yellow when you breed them into jungles and stuff. So they can really be beautiful. So they just have like an increased amount of band in there absolutely incredible. Now the bad thing is is that sometimes the super zebras can be a little genetically flawed. So again there's this thing that's called like all recessive concentrate. So when you're concentrating a color or pattern mutation sometimes you also concentrate other little mutations in the genes. So uh, zebra carpets are really beautiful but also have a little bit of a glitch to them. But uh, aren't these guys absolutely adorable? Gosh I tell you guys I have been falling in love with tortoises. I think that's bringing Speedy back to the shop has kind of rekindled that tortoise thing. As a matter of fact I talked to you guys I really want to get either a Galapagos or an Aldalbrin tortoise pretty soon. I just gotta have one in my life. But this is another tortoise that I've always loved. When I was really little, uh, I used to see these at the pet shop, local pet shop, and they were like 20 bucks. These, of course, are what they call leopard tortoises. And look at the pattern and color on that animal. I mean, they're one of the really most beautiful tortoises. You know, now they're not nearly as common as they used to be. With all tortoises, a lot of times they become threatened because their environments are being deforested or people are eating them or even the pet trade for that matter. So leopard tortoises are a little more rare and certainly a lot more money and uh, these guys will get big. I've seen some leopard tortoises as big as Speedy already. It's pretty cool. Uh, again, I really love tortoises. I wish I had more space but in Michigan it's hard to keep something. Even getting something like a Galop or an Eldower, the giant tortoises are going to be a little difficult to figure out where we're going to put them but uh, I'll figure that out later. Well, my buddy Brian who owns Reptile House here also breeds a lot of really cool ball pythons. I will put his link in the description to his site. You guys definitely want to check out his stuff. It's pretty awesome but this is actually a caramel glow which is really an awesome animal. You don't see these too often anymore. It's a double recessive mutation with ghost or hypo basically and then of course caramel and uh, again back in the day these were like so sought after and now hardly anyone is working with them anymore. They sometimes have some kinking issues but Brian told me he's never produced a kink from his bloodline so that's pretty awesome and the caramel glows. Holy cow these things are awesome. The first one I think that I produced I think I sold it for like $25,000. I mean that gives you an idea how rare they were back in the day but how awesome is that? Oh my gosh take a look at this guy here. This is actually an orange dream leopard clown bumblebee yellow belly. I mean that is a lot of mutations in there but man that thing is absolutely gorgeous and I always love the way the clown and the spider mix together because it really reduces things and then that orange dream is crazy and then you add leopard into clown and it's ridiculous so this is a beautiful snake. You guys know that I love Enchi banana stuff and this is a stunner here. I mean this is a great example of how Enchi can really brighten up banana line. That thing is ridiculous. I tell you and again you know the Enchi and the banana are both co-dominant so this is basically a double co-dominant and uh, if you breed these to something else you're going to get a lot of really cool stuff. I love it to go to cinnamon because cinnamon enchi bananas are ridiculous. And this is another one of the spider clown type things but this is actually a killer bee clown which is a super pastel spider clown. Again look at how that reduces that pattern. Oh my gosh I tell you what I don't care about what anyone says. I think ball pythons are some of the coolest animals on the planet. Remember I showed you guys back at the building that I work with the extreme gene and how it's really cool when you get it into certain animals. Well I've never seen this. This is a <laughs> this is a extreme gene clown. I mean, look at how reduced it is. There's something that's called like a blade clown. Ooh, you're a cheeky monkey. There's something that's called a blade clown, which is basically that reduced pattern on the side. But this is an extreme gene, which is much more. And this thing is really upset. But it is gorgeous, isn't it? Just so you guys see, this is what the extreme gene looks like. Again, I've showed you extreme gene stuff, but I've never showed you the actual mutation itself. So really, it's just kind of like a normal ball python that has a reduction a pattern but it's genetic so you can breed it into other things and it ends up passing down from there so that thing is cute. And then the last mutation of course is what I was talking about with the blade clown which has that reduction of the dorsal patterning. This is an albino blade clown. So think about that. That's a you know that's a lot of genes. That's three pretty difficult genes to put together. It takes a lot of work but uh, Brian is killing the game with ball pythons man. I just love this place. It's so cool. If you ever get into the Chicago area you gotta come check this place out. It is well worth it. So Noah has been wanting to get a bird for a long time and Lori is completely against it. Uh, so I figured I'd give Noah a chance to Can hold a couple of birds. Yeah. <laughs> Look at how cute that is. Oh my gosh. Of course Noah really wants to get like a bigger bird like an African gray or a cockatoo but uh, this is this, this might so be a good cool. Look at the color on this guy. It's awesome. So awesome isn't it? 
Is this the first time you've ever held a bird? Yeah. Oh my god. I think so. <laughs> That's all, like I said, he's kind of become obsessed with getting a bird. Look at him. He's so cute. He's cool. That's awesome. awesome. So you guys get to witness Noah holding a bird for the very first time. All right, so as much as I could play here all day, we do have to get home. I've got to get back to my animals. I've got some work to do. So what do you say we get on the road and get to the shop right now? And I'm back here at the shop. I tell you what, that was a whirlwind travel. I really do have to start thinking about doing some things where I get a little bit of sleep because I seem to always be going with little to no sleep. But that reptile house is an absolutely cool place. I love visiting reptile specialty shops, so that was absolutely awesome. But we have to get RJ back in his pond. I tell you what, guys, it was absolutely a really special time with RJ. It's been a while since I've kind of taken him on an adventure, and I was so pleased with the way he kind of interacted with everyone never did he open his mouth no aggression whatsoever it was like the old RJ so I just kind of have a renewed kind of interest in working with him daily to keep him this puppy dog tame I mean people loved him and he made a huge difference I mean so many people were like oh my god I never thought I was gonna get a chance to pet an alligator or be up so close so it was absolutely incredible but I'm telling you what I'm sure that even though he had a little bathtub time he's gonna be excited to get back in his pond so when you say we go ahead and put him back come on bud there we go, buddy. There we go, buddy. Oh! <laughs> Look at him. There we go, buddy. Oh gosh, RJ is so amazing. And again, it's like I said, just it was so cool. Literally this morning, I spent like an hour, hour and a half just laying in bed with him. He just had his head up on the pillow and just had to hung out with me. I mean, it's been a while since I've had that kind of interaction with him. I take him out a lot, but to really spend the time with him that I did this weekend was really special for me. And I was so excited that even though he's much bigger now, he's still just as well behaved. But you know, as I was driving home, I was thinking of so many different things. I'm thinking like, of this animal and that animal. And the one animal I haven't updated you guys, and, and quite frankly, I haven't even had a chance to take a look at for a little while, was Smiley. So what do you guys say we go look at Smiley and see how he's doing? And of course, here's my boy Smiley. I tell you what, I just absolutely love pies. And it's funny, I don't know, do you guys do that sometimes when you're driving, you just start thinking like, oh, I gotta check this out, or I can't wait to get home to see this. This was the animal that I kinda really was thinking about and thinking, I gotta get home and see him and see how it is. Of course, I wanna see everything, but uh, this guy popped in my mind. I love pies. As a matter of fact, I'm getting a whole bunch more pies again this coming week, so it's going to be really cool. I just love getting them. And it's just awesome to get a new batch because you never know what you're going to get. And every batch that we get, I keep two or three of them, so I'm kind of growing that group of animals because they are so amazing. Regardless, I'm going to just kind of walk around, make sure everything is okay here, and then I'm going to get out of here because I haven't slept in a while. Truth be told, I still have to edit the vlog, so uh, it's going to be a late night, so I'll run home, check and see what Lori is up to, and then get to editing, so hopefully I don't fall asleep during it. But anyways, there's an update on Smiley. Hey guys, hey guys, good to see you. Lori, I'm home. Are you excited? I'm so happy you're home. Oh, <laughs> I miss <laughs> you so much. <laughs> she always does this. She's always so fake like that. Zeus is jealous. <laughs> the, the truth is, is that whenever me and Lori hug, Zeus is barked because he just is so jealous. You're such a jealous puppy dog. So guys, it is so good to be home. I'm gonna be honest with you, I am buckled. I have not slept hardly at all. And I tell you, we have been traveling like crazy. But I'm definitely gonna need to get some rest. There's no doubt about that. I hope that you guys have enjoyed this journey. Thank you so much for all the support you guys show me. You guys mean the world to me and I love you guys so much. Can you do me a couple favors before I get some rest can you smash that like button as well as turn those post notifications on so you know when I upload a video which is every day seven days a week at nine o'clock in the morning Eastern Standard Time remember to be kind to somebody and I promise I'm gonna see you guys tomorrow